Today, Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee released thousands of Facebook ads linked to Russia. The ads show how the Kremlin-backed Internet Research Agency tried to sow divisions among Americans during the 2016 presidential election. Like this post from the page, Stop All Invaders, that was actually brought to you by Russia. It includes a clearly photoshopped picture of former President Obama sitting in the Oval Office with, ex with Islamic flags behind him. But Facebook propaganda like this may seem quaint by the time we elect the next president. We are quickly heading to a new frontier in media manipulation. For example, have you seen this video? We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like, uh, I don't know, uh, Killmonger was right or uh, Ben Carson is in the sunken place. Now, you see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. Peele, an Oscar-winning filmmaker, made that video as a PSA about fake news. But there's actually a term for videos meant to be deceptive, quote, deep fake. They're made with artificial intelligence software that make them seem real. It's a problem that's already starting to worry lawmakers who could potentially be victims of this technology someday. Joining me now is Kevin Roos, business and technology columnist for The New York Times. He's recently taken a deep dive into deep fakes, and he's here to tell the tale. Kevin, that to me is the scariest story um, that's, that's out there right now. Absolutely 100%. If you can put words into somebody's mouth, I mean, that was pretty realistic. It sounded like he maybe had some dental surgery, but it was generally pretty realistic. I mean, what can't you do? You can claim people are saying all sorts of things, right? Yeah, so these are videos that are created with the help of artificial intelligence software. And Hollywood studios have always had access to CGI and advanced video editing techniques. But now they're in the hands of the masses. Anyone can download these free tools and use them to swap one person's face onto another person's face very realistically. I tried this on myself. It took a couple days, but we got my face onto Jake Gyllenhaal's body and Ryan Gosling's body. And you can imagine how this kind of technology could be used to set up a political candidate or sabotage them. Jordan Peele's obviously doing an impression of the president, which is why he sounds so much like him. Do you need to find somebody who sounds like that person? Or does that technology, or is that technology on the horizon? There's also audio versions of this that are being developed so that you could, say, take a pre-recorded piece and make someone say it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not that hard anymore, thanks to these artificial intelligence tools, to make pretty convincing deep fakes, as they're called, um, and, and get them out there. And they're already starting to cause a lot of problems. Um, I, I think back to um, the Romney statement about the, what was the 47 percent or whatever the number was, uh, that he made during that um, uh, dinner with donors. How easy will it be to, for a politician who gets caught on a hot mic or caught saying something behind closed doors to say, uh-uh, no, fake, or Donald Trump to look back at the excess Hollywood tape and say, uh-uh, not me, that's fake? Exactly. I think that's one of the real dangers here is not that there will be so many deep fakes that are fooling people all over the internet, um, but that any person who is caught on video doing something um, bad will now have plausible deniability. They'll say, that wasn't me, that was a deep fake. Um, I think we can very easily imagine that hap happening in, in an upcoming campaign. Um, what is it going to mean for um, knowledge? Uh, how, do you, how do you protect against it? Are we just going to have to become skeptical of everything that we not only read, um, but now we see and we hear with our own eyes? Yeah, sort of a undermining the fundamental assumption of the Internet. I mean, for years there's been this saying, pics or it didn't happen, yeah. right? If there aren't photos or videos of something, you're, it's suspect. But now we're saying even if there are pics, even if there is video, it's still suspect. So I think people are going to have to learn to be suspicious of not just the things that they read online, but also the things that they see. Um, let's listen to uh, this Google Assistant um, <laughs> sound. This is, a, this is a Google Assistant, which is a computer, calling a hair salon to book an appointment. Listen. Oh, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. 
That is not a human. That is a computer. It sounds just like a human, but it's a computer. That woman on the other side of the phone call had no idea that she was talking to a computer. What do you, what do you say about that? Well, it's amazing that all of these technologies, the, the deep fakes, the virtual voice assistants are being developed in an industry where there's basically no regulation on how these technologies are governed. There's some ethics boards that are convening to talk about how we can use AI responsibly, but basically it's sort of the Wild West right now. Can, and you, can you regulate it? I mean, are you going to get into arguments of free speech here? I think that's possible, but I think people are starting to realize that these technologies are getting pretty advanced now to the point where pretty soon it won't just be theoretical harm, it will be actual harm. Um, we're already seeing um, things being designed like the Google Assistant that will trick humans, that will, that will convince them that they're on the phone with another human when really it's just a machine. Congress is having a hard time even regulating what ads can show up on Facebook and social media. I mean, they're clearly behind the times when it comes to technology that we have right now. Um, can we expect that our lawmakers will be able to keep up with the way that te technology is changing and how rapidly it's changing? I think that's going to be hard because in some cases the thing that will stop the AI from being used, misused is other AI. So in the case of deepfakes, researchers are now working on programs using the same kind of AI that will be able to detect when a video is fake. So in some cases you need this kind of AI to be able to stop the bad kind of AI. Um, what are you going to be watching out for? What's your, what's on the horizon for you? I'm going to be looking at what social media platforms are going to be doing to combat this because, as we know, most video is seen through YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, and those platforms have an enormous responsibility to make sure that they are not being used as funnels for this kind of misinformation. So their ability to detect and stop this content from being spread is going to be really important. Is it clearly that they know they, that this sort of thing could be used for ill? I mean... Everyone's excited about technology. It's exciting to create something new. It's exciting to be able to put your voice into somebody else's face. Yes, that's kind of cool. Oh my God, look what look what, look what technology can do. Um, is the is the are the consequences as a parent to the masses? Yeah, I I don't know that that's the case. But what's what's really troubling to me is that no one at Google before that announcement thought. Maybe this will freak some people out. Maybe this, maybe everyone's not going to think how cool it is that our AI can now fool yeah. the person at the hair salon. No one is blowing the whistle internally on these kind of things, and I think that's really scary. It reminds me of the book, The Circle. All of this does. Um, I appreciate it, Kevin uh, Roos. We we um, we appreciate your time. Thank you for for scaring us today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.